Hi, my name is Marjorie and I'm a documentary style newborn and family photographer. Parenthood is such a wonderful adventure, but it can feel lonely sometimes. So many experiences we go through are never really talked about. I wanted to create a space where parents can openly discuss their challenges, their successes, and their journeys. This is the resource I wish I had when I first became a mom. This is I Wish I Knew, a series on parenthood. My name is Michael O'Shea. Um, my wife is Nicole Sturbus, and uh, we adopted our son Eamon in 2019 when he was a newborn, and uh, we're excited to share our experience. Yes, absolutely. That's the, that one's a, an easy one to answer. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm one of those people who's thought who thought about that when they were a kid themselves. And you know, Nicole and I. Uh, you know, it was a big part of our conversations before we even got married. We were married in 2009, so my goodness, 10 years uh, before we finally adopted Eamon. That's a long time to be sort of talking and family planning and thinking about what kind of parents we would like to be. And uh, so that was, that was a big part of our, our, our lives and our understanding of each other as a couple. We had uh, difficulty conceiving uh, um, biologic, a biological child. We didn't do IVF or anything like that. It became clear to us after a while that, that, it, wasn't, that it wasn't going to happen. Um, and there is a, uh, a lot of mourning that happened. A lot of, a lot of mourning that was so much a part of our life and our world. I remember some of the hardest times were were like the first day of school and Halloween because you'd see all these kids. You'd see all the people posting the pictures of their kids and looking adorable and like, oh my God, they're so much older than they were before. And your sense of the passage of time, you know, of your peers just goes whoosh really, really fast. Adoption was always like, oh, that's always an option. But, you know, it was very theoretical. And then I remember the our, our, after we had started considering it seriously, friends of ours had a baby, and I think the first time holding that baby, I was like, okay, I, I can see how, I can see how this will feel. I can see how, how you know, it's not going to feel like someone else's baby, um, and uh, that was certainly true when it actually came to it. We finally reached the point where we were ready, in not just emotionally but also financially to be able to adopt which was which is its own challenging thing there's so many families that can't afford you know to to do a, a, an adoption like that the program that we went through you create like a profile for yourself it's almost like a dating profile the idea is to match you with a mother a birth mother in her second trimester um, so you have a little time to, to, to meet, to get to know, make sure that this is the match that you feel comfortable with. So we had to create these like pamphlets that were like, this is Nicole and Mike. We had to take pictures and we had to basically sell ourselves as parents. Now we're not, we're not any different than other people in terms of all the insecurities that come along with becoming parents, you know, and, and like, are we up for this? Are we, are, are, you know, are we right? Except it had this added level of like, we're asking somebody else to let us be the parents of the child that they gave birth to. You know, it's, it's one thing to feel like, to feel like, ah, I, I feel anxiety about the child that, that, that I, I was born to, but it's another thing to ask somebody else, like, we're, we're definitely ready to parent your child, you know. It was, it was an emotional, it was an emotionally difficult thing to make. They said the, the average time was 18 months, they said. Six months go by, okay. A year goes by. All right, all right, well, we're into the, they said 18 months, so 18 months. 18 months reaches, and we're like, okay. We start getting past 18 months of waiting, you know, we start to do things like go on family, go on vacations and ask each other, you know, what does this look like if we don't have children, you know, and starting to conceive a world in which we don't have children. And then two years to the day, we get the call. 
to the day. We flew out to Oklahoma that day, um, and then we met him. We weren't sure. We didn't want to commit to anything while we were on the way. We weren't sure how it was all going to go, and it was very sudden. Um, but the moment we laid eyes on him, we knew that he was our child, and, and um, we were his parents, and uh, we were there with him in, in, uh, in the early days in the hospital. He had to stay in the hospital for a couple weeks, and we were just there holding him day in, day out. Every adoption is very different. Um, ours was... Ours was much more dramatic than, than the normal situation. They didn't even decide to, to uh, place Eamon with an adoptive family until he was born. So he was, we met him maybe, I think, three or four days after he was born. And when we got back, we didn't have anything. We had no baby anything. We had no crib. We had no bottle stuff. We had some stuff that we had picked up in, in, in Tulsa. Uh, you know, we obviously had to buy a, a, a car seat in order to take him out of the hospital. But um, it was flying by the seat of your pants in a big, big way. Our lives for the first three months were pretty much chaos of just like, you know, buying things and setting up a nursery. We had no nursery set up. We had Nicole's painting studio was his, was his nursery. And then March rolls around. We're like, all right, our lives are finally sort of stable. We've got we're 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 parents now. And then and then the lockdown happened. And it's like, okay, whole new, whole new ball game here. <laughs> that was our journey. That was our long journey. When we went out there, the very first set of documents that we signed. Um, we all went into a, a, a lawyer's office probably two or three days after we arrived in Oklahoma. Um, and they signed an irrevocable, irrevocable petition for, I forget what the, term, what the term was, but the documents they signed said, we are giving up our parental rights and we are assigning our parental rights to these people. That was ironclad, legally binding at that point. He was born in November of 2019 and we finally got the courts to finalize the adoption in January of this year. Uh, so that's over a year of waiting. You know, he still doesn't have a social security number. <laughs> he still doesn't have a birth certificate with his name on it. To get to this final part where the court, they just, was just reading of legal language basically, and, the, um, and the, the judge basically, the only questions the judge really had was, do you still want this adoption? You know, do you love this child? And of course, which I just broke down, you know, blubbering, like, yes, I do. And I remember Eamon looking up at me and saying, <laughs> it's like, why is Dada crying? I don't understand any of this. And, um, and that was that. And now we're, now we're a family. One thing we learned in the education, because we had to do a lot of education, a lot of learning about parenting and about being adoptive parents beforehand, was, you know, to to, to be honest with your child um, in an age-appropriate way. He knows he's a he well, to the degree that he understands what adoption is, he has heard it many times that he is adopted. Um, it's not something that's going to be a bomb that's dropped on him at some later point in his life. Um, he's uh, so, and it's all about just integrating a sense of self, uh, integrating a trust with us, you know, that we're not holding secrets from him. We got a picture of all of us together, which was another thing that I'm really, really glad that we were able to, to do. Um, and we've ultimately made a, um, a little picture book about his, about his birth and how we became a family. Um, and uh, it was great. We would put on a little board book and stuff like that. And so, you know, he has that picture that he can look at, and that becomes just a talking point for us to, uh, to under for him to understand who he who he is. When these concepts are going to be able to be absorbed by him, I have no idea. You know, and so we just have to be kind of like ready to be validating of any feelings that that, that come up for him. But we never know when that next question is going to come up. Open adoptions, which are becoming increasingly common, 
are, the child knows who their birth parents are, um, and may or may not have some relationship with them. We know families who, who uh, they're in regular communication. They Zoom with the birth parents like on a regular basis. We want more connection than we have. It, it sort of makes a lot of that, that uncertainty about, about Eamon's you know, learning about his, who he is and who, what his background is. Um, it would make that a lot easier in some ways. The last time we heard from them was Eamon's first birthday. Uh, which was really a great message to get. They just said they were really relieved about the placement. They were glad that they chose us. We don't know which direction their lives are going to take. We don't know which direction our lives are going to take. And, and, and Amon's, I don't know if we'll never see or hear from them again. Being ready for anything is a big part of what I feel like we took on. It was something that I always assumed was just a purely biological thing that only that only women experienced. It wasn't until after Eamon was born and both of us experienced some level of it that I was like, oh, oh, this is that's what this is. And thankfully, resources that we had and we had a lot of them uh, starting off, starting off, they, they explained that no, it's not. It's it's a phenomenon that any parent can experience regardless of gender, age, status as, as adoptive parent or natural parent, and that it's okay and that it's not permanent. This is not what your life is going to look like from now on and your relationship with your child is going to look like from, from now on. But you know, the, the status as adoptive parents did give it a, allowed it to have a certain specific shape and focus, which was specifically like we, we don't, they, they made a mistake choosing us. You know, we, 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 shouldn't, we, we shouldn't be parents, you know. That was hard, man. That was hard. I don't feel that way at all anymore, but it was, the, it was in those early days, it was really, really rough. I mean, I can think of a single happy moment, um, which is the first time he said, I love you, Dada. It was kind of a cliche about the miracle of, uh, of childbirth. That's the, that's the phrase that's used. But the miracle of childhood, in particular, particularly early development, of watching this, watching this, this little human larva become like a person right before your eyes, um, a person who has their own unique relationship with you, and if you have a partner, your partner, it, it's it's just spectacular to behold, and it's and it's it's more beautiful and glorious than any than any national park I've seen or anything like that. Just like the, the capacity, his capacity for, for wonder and for love and for pain and for confusion and for all these other emotions. It's just a joy. Being there for it is just a joy. Ha, <laughs> of course. Yeah, oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I mean, particularly now, you know, particularly at, at, at age two, seeing what we've done, the foundational stuff of, uh, of us as parents really start to take shape, you know, in terms of how he is socially and how he is in, in the world, to be like, I'm so glad that we were able to be Eamon's parents. Um, and I'm so glad that we get to, to watch him and share our life with, with him and he gets to share his life with us. Um, it's, 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 it's all worth it. Hell yeah, it's worth it. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll tune in next time for more stories from parents just like you.